the game state's pretty simple class, but it's very important when it comes to multiplayer. So once you've got a server client set up, the game state's used for sharing data between the server and clients. The game state only exists on the server, but is replicated to all clients. So this allows clients to access the state of the game. And by, and by state of the game, I mean data that's not specific to one player. It's generally game mode sort of data that changes as the state of the game changes. So like the team score, a commonly used example, where all players would need to access it to read it for like a UI or whatever. And then, but it's, it's overall the state of the game. And just other things like world state changes that you might have in your game. So if you if you had like a world quest or something that any player could do, that you know like that would be in there. And it, there's countless examples of where you're going to have this sort of state that you need to communicate to clients. But the actual class itself that Unreal provides it provides the functionality, but the actual functions and things inside the the state the the class. There's not a lot to it. Um, there is one important uh, array that we need to be aware of, and that's the player array. So if we come into the, if we come into here and we search for game state, you can see again, there's just like the game mode, there's two versions of it. I'm, I'm not going to go into the, the regular game state. It's the same situation as the game mode. It, it adds that implementation for the match state. If you're going to use the match state in the game mode, you'll need to use the game state with the match state. But uh, most commonly, you're going to be using game mode base and game state base. So in here, you'll have a reference to the game mode. So the, the game mode is what actually creates the game state, and it obviously passes a reference. So you can use uh, this get game mode or get default game mode. I think there's another one, get auth game mode. That return you can cast to your game mode type for, through the game state. The other one, important thing here is the player array. So this is players will register their player state, game state. So you've got access to all the players in the game through this player array. It can be very handy. Now, one thing to be aware of with the game state is you can't RPC, so that's a remote procedure call. You can't RPC to the server from the client. So you can't go from, say, your client to the client version of the game state and RPC to the game state server. Just it, there's an ownership problem there because it's the server owns the, the game state. So just be aware of that one because I've felt I've fallen for that one many a times. If you want to RPC, if you need to get to the, the game state server side, so maybe you're trying to get to the game mode server side, you need to do the RPCs at your player control point. And just scrolling down, you can see there's not much else to the game state. It's more there for you to implement the requirements of your game. And, and that's what we'll use the game state for. We're going to set up a game phase system, which is similar to what the match state is, but we're just going to set up our own system. It has a bit more levels and it's a bit more flexible. So let's create our game state class. And so let's create our game state. Again, it's a manager class. So I'm going to put it in there. Gonna look for the game state base. And same same again, we're gonna do the constructor. Uh, we'll make it abstract like we did for the game mode and we'll just put in a game play so we'll come back to this class and uh, we'll add a bit of functionality here mostly revolving around the game phase that i mentioned and and uh there'll be a bit of communication with the game mode but at the moment that's that's all i want to do it's just playing what the game state was and get it implemented. So let's let's create the project game state. And we'll call it game state. 
and we want to inherit from our core game state. Probably seems to be redundant doing these second project classes, but it'll make more sense once we start getting more into other plugins and and things. So in the editor, I I just realized in the last video I put the game mode in the wrong place. So we inherited from the the RF game mode which is the project game mode, but we've put it in a core plugin. So if we were to move this core plugin into another project, it's going to try and reference a class that's not in the plugin. So this this uh, blueprint class should have been put in the content. So I'm just going to move that to there now. It's going to break the same folder structure. And I'm going to move a game mode over to there. And I'm going to get a message here that is basically saying that this is referenced in the, the config settings. And by moving it, I could mess up that config. And that's because we assigned it in the project settings, which is a config setting. So if we go here now and just do redirects. So now if we come into, we don't need to create a blueprint class for the game state. We don't really have any settings or anything we need to change in blueprints. But what we can do is come into our game mode and set our game state to our RF game state class. When the game mode starts, it'll create a game state class of our class. And if we come into project settings, we're probably going to see that these are all reset now. Uh, this will usually reset after you do the fix up redirects. You can just set this now to the to the new version. You may still have a reference here. Sometimes you actually can't get two. I think restarting the editor will fix that up. Uh, if in doubt and you're still having some issues, I'll just show you how else you can change it. We come back to our IDE and you come up to config. And here you've got your default game, default engine. I think it's default engine. You come in here, this is where it points to those settings. So you can see this is the game map settings. It's got the, the default map, the editor startup map, the game instance that we assigned. And these are the two here for the game mode. So that's server one and the game mode. So if you can just point it to your game framework, if, if, it's, uh, if it's set to the core one, you'll see RTS core here instead of game probably. But you can change that there. And when you restart the editor, it'll be pointing to the correct, correct one. And that's it for the game state until we come back to it. Up next is Plague Drop.